Hello, my name is Darius Quillsbrook. The following is my interview with my dear friend Hermione Granger, a witch and an aura in the Ministry of Magic. This idea was originally going to be part of a novel, and it may yet be turned into one, but I thought it would be interesting to turn, at least this part, into a podcast. Enjoy. My dear Hermione, it's lovely to see you. It's been way too long. I see Ron and Harry couldn't make it. I hope everything is okay. Hello, Darius. It's wonderful to see you too. Yes, I'm afraid Harry and Ron were caught up with some last-minute obligations at the Ministry, but they send their warmest regards. They were quite looking forward to this, but duty calls, as it often does, in our line of work. However, they're hoping to join us later if they can manage. Now, let's find a cosy spot, perhaps in the corner by the hearth, get ourselves some butterbeer and delve into the tales awaiting to be told. Here we are. Let me get your chair for you. Such a gentleman, thank you. I've been eagerly anticipating our discussion today. That sounds perfect. By the way, you look lovely today. That blue really suits you. Thank you, Darius. You're very kind. This blue cloak is indeed one of my favourites. Now, shall we begin? I'm eager to dive into any stories or details you need for your narrative. Hello there, dearies. What can I get started for you? We have a nice fresh pudding in the back, baked it myself this morning. Or perhaps you'd like some tea and biscuits? We'll have two butterbeers with some ginger. That's how you like it, right, Hermione? Yes, that's perfect, thank you. Now, let's see, where was I? Ah, yes. The world of magic has an endless trove of tales waiting to be unearthed, and I'm always thrilled to help you out. Your talent for weaving the magic of our world into your stories is truly remarkable, especially for a muggle. Okay. Well, first, can you recount the tale you told me last week on the phone? I'm glad you finally had one installed, by the way. Obviously, I wish I could make flu calls, but I'm just a humble muggle at heart. Ah, yes, the wonders of muggle technology. I must admit, having a telephone has its conveniences. My parents had one, of course, so I'm not unacquainted with them. But now, on to the tale from our early days at the Ministry. Here you are, my dears. Now make sure to let me know if you'll be needing anything else. Thank you, much appreciated. Back to the story, then. Cheers. Cheers. We were tasked with apprehending a rogue wizard who had come into possession of a dark artifact, a mirror, with the sinister ability to trap the souls of those who looked into it. The chase led us through a bewildering maze of enchanted alleyways in Diagon Alley, which seemed to shift and change with every step we took. As we navigated the ever-changing labyrinth, The camaraderie between Harry, Ron and myself was our guiding light. We finally cornered the rogue wizard in the gloomy confines of Borgen and Burks. A fierce duel ensued amidst the shadows of the ancient curiosities that filled the shop. With a combination of teamwork, quick thinking and a dash of luck, we managed to disarm the rogue wizard and secure the dark artifact. The Ministry later ensured the mirror was destroyed to prevent any further malevolent use. It was an adventure that reminded us of the importance of our duty, the ever-present dangers lurking within the wizarding world, and the unyielding bond of friendship that saw us through the peril. Each spell, cast and challenge faced together strengthened the bond between us, a bond forged through countless adversities back in our Hogwarts days. This mission was but a glimpse into the myriad adventures that awaited us in our pursuit of justice and the protection of the magical community. Each day brought with it a new lesson, a new challenge, and a new opportunity to stand together against the forces that threaten to disrupt the delicate balance of our world. Absolutely fascinating stuff. You're a natural storyteller yourself, Hermione. You should write your own novel one day. Now, would you mind expanding on this case in more detail? For example, how did you know this dark wizard was in Diagon Alley? How did you come across him? Um, Our intelligence at the Ministry had picked up whispers in the dark corners of the wizarding community about a dangerous artefact that had resurfaced. The Aura Department had been on high alert, tracing the, the faint trails of dark magic that had begun to weave through the heart of Diagon Alley. On that fateful day, we received a tip from an informant who had seen a suspicious figure lurking near Nocturne Alley. Given the recent rumours and the nature of the dark artefact in question, we suspected that Diagon Alley might be the hub from where the rogue wizard 
operated or sought refuge. As we stealthily navigated through the twisting alleys, our senses were heightened to the whispers of dark magic that hung in the air. Our training and instincts led us through the concealed paths that opened up to the hidden corners of Diagon Alley, often known only to those who ventured beyond the known. We eventually spotted the rogue wizard as he hurriedly made his way through the crowd, the chill of dark magic clinging to his cloak. The chase was on and the rogue wizard led us on a perilous dance through a maze of bewitched alleyways that seemed to morph with every twist and turn attempting to lose us amidst the shifting landscape. The rogue wizard had masked his appearance with a disillusionment charm, making him blend with the surroundings. But the trail of dark magic he left in his wake was unmissable to our trained senses. The echo of his footsteps, the shiver of dark magic in the air, were the sinister notes that played to the rhythm of our chase. We finally cornered him in Borgen and Burks, a known haven for those dabbling in the dark arts. The duel that followed was a whirl of flashing spells and the clash of wills amidst the shadows. I feel slightly silly that I didn't think to ask this earlier, but what was this dark wizard's name? And can you give me a little history of him? Anything you may know or find relevant? The rogue wizard's name was Mortimer Grimshaw. He was a known dark arts enthusiast who had managed to elude the Ministry's grasp for quite some time. His mastery of concealment spells and dark magic made him a formidable adversary. Grimshaw had a history of associating with dark artifacts, dealers, and was known to be particularly ruthless. The case involving the Soul Trapping Mirror was one of the instances where his nefarious activities posed a direct threat to the wizarding community, necessitating immediate intervention from the Aura Department. The capture of Mortimer Grimshaw marked a significant achievement in our early days at the Ministry, and it sent a clear message to the dark underbelly of the wizarding world that the Aura Department was vigilant and resolute in its duty to protect the magical community from such threats. Thank you very much, Hermione. That was a great opening story about Grimshaw. I hope soon I can get Harry's and Ron's perspectives on this case. Harry's and Ron's perspectives would definitely add a rich layer of insight and colour to the narrative. Each of us had our own unique vantage point during that mission and blending those experiences will provide a fuller picture of the events that unfolded. I'm sure their anecdotes and personal reflections will add depth and a range of emotions to the tale. This may be asking a lot of you, but do you think you could recall any conversations that you all may have had on the journey? Of course, I can get with Ron and Harry later for their versions and weave it all together at a later date. No pressure. Um, well, I can certainly give my best attempt. Just make sure to take this with a grain of salt. Of course. Please continue. Well, to the best of my recollection, as we hurried through the twisting alleyways, Harry was the first to break the silence, his voice steady but with an undertone of urgency. Harry. We need to apprehend Grimshaw before he uses that mirror again. Merlin knows how many souls are already trapped within. Ron, with his typical blend of humour and resolve, chimed in, trying to lighten the heavy atmosphere just a tad. Ron. Well, he hasn't met the likes of us yet, has he? We'll have that mirror secured faster than you can say. Quidditch. Despite the gravity of the situation, I couldn't help but smile at Ron's attempt to keep spirits high. Me. We'll need to stay sharp. Grimshaw is known for his cunning, and we have to ensure the mirror is undamaged. We need to free the trapped souls. Harry, with a determined glint in his eyes, nodded. Harry. We'll get them out, Hermione. We always find a way. As we neared Borgen and Burks, the eerie glow of the shop's sign casting long shadows on the cobbled street, Ron tightened his grip on his wand. Ron, ready to give Grimshaw a taste of justice? With a collective nod, we stepped into the darkness awaiting us, our ones at the ready, united in purpose. Were there any words exchanged with Grimshaw before the fight? Indeed, there were. As we confronted Grimshaw amidst the eerie shadows of Borgen and Burks, the tension in the air was like a cold blade. Grimshaw, standing amidst the dark artifacts, had a sinister smile playing on his lips as he realised he was cornered. Here's how the exchange unfolded. Grimshaw. Ah... Uh, the Golden Trio graces me with their presence. Come to admire my latest acquisition. His eyes gleamed maliciously as he gestured towards the dark mirror, its surface seeming to swirl with an ominous life of its own. Harry, his voice steady and cold, retorted. 
Harry. Release the souls you've trapped, Grimshaw, and hand over the mirror. It ends now. Grimshaw chuckled darkly, his eyes dancing with malevolent amusement. Grimshaw. You think you can stop me, you children? Ron, with that fiery Weasley temper, snapped. Ron. We've faced far worse than you and come out on top. Hand over the mirror and we can end this without bloodshed. I could feel the fury simmering within Grimshaw as he sneered at our audacity. Me. You won't get away with this, Grimshaw. The Ministry will see to it. His laughter echoed through the gloomy store as he raised his wand, ready to engage. Grimshaw. Then let's dance to the tune of darkness, shall we? With those ominous words, the air crackled with the impending storm of spells as we braced ourselves for the battle that loomed. You certainly have a mind for storytelling, Hermione. That was impressive dialogue. Now, if you wouldn't mind indulging me further, I'd like you to describe the battle in as much detail as you can recall. And please, feel free to embellish as you see fit. Embellishments never hurt a good story, I always say. <laughs> All right, let me think. Hmm, I'm trying to think of how to start. I suppose Grimshaw's sinister laughter echoing through the gloomy interior of Borgen and Burks, as the first spell was cast, makes the most sense. The spell streaked through the dim light with a deadly glow, and the battle had begun. Grimshaw was quick, his one movements a blur as dark curses flew from its tip. We moved in sync, as though a dance rehearsed a thousand times, our spells intertwining in the air to form a shield, deflecting the malicious magic aimed at us. The surroundings trembled with the force of our magical clash. Shelves rattled, ancient artifacts trembled on their perches, threatening to crash down at any moment. The room was a cacophony of shouted incantations, the crackling of magic in the air, and the sinister hiss of Grimshaw's curses. Harry was relentless, his face a mask of focused determination, as he countered Grimshaw's curses with spells of protection and defiance. His shouts of Protego and Expelliarmus rang through the eerie silence that had befallen the rest of Diagon Alley. Ron was beside him, his one work precise as he aimed to disarm and incapacitate Grimshaw. His booming voice echoed as he cast, stupefy, only to have Grimshaw narrowly evade the stunning spell. I focused on disarming Grimshaw and protecting us from his relentless assault. My mind raced through the extensive lexicon of spells, choosing the most effective counter curses and shields. Funea tai incomtatum, I shouted, aiming to halt the effects of a particularly vicious curse hurtling our way. The fight raged, a storm of flashing lights, swirling cloaks, and the desperate fight for control. The air grew thick with the heat of battle, the tension a physical weight upon our shoulders. Grimshaw was skilled, his curses innovative and deadly, pushing our defenses to the limit, but we had each other's backs, moving as a singular force against the tempest of dark magic that threatened to engulf us. The turning point came when Grimshaw aimed a curse at a chandelier above us, intending to bury us beneath a rain of shattered glass. But with a synchronized move, Harry, Ron and I cast a powerful shield charm, deflecting the spell back towards Grimshaw. Caught off guard, Grimshaw stumbled, his defense momentarily broken. Seizing the opportunity, Harry cast a powerful Expelliarmus, disarming Grimshaw as Ron and I reinforced a containment spell wrapping Grimshaw in unyielding magical binds. As Grimshaw's wand clattered to the floor, the sinister glint in his eyes dimmed, replaced by the realization of defeat. The dark mirror, the core of his wicked ambitions, was now beyond his grasp. The room, once a battlefield of clashing wills and deadly intent, fell into a somber silence, the only sound being the heavy breaths of victory and the lingering echoes of a battle hard won. Earlier you said Grimshaw called you children. How young were you all, seeing as this was your first joint assignment in the Aura's office? Yes, we were quite young at the time, fresh out of Hogwarts and in our early 20s. Despite the significant experiences and challenges we had faced during our school years, in the eyes of seasoned dark wizards like Grimshaw, we were still considered inexperienced and youthful, thus his derogatory term, children. Our ages, however, didn't reflect our competency and determination. The mission against Grimshaw was one of our earliest assignments together as Auras, a true test of our training and the bond we shared. It was a stern reminder of the dangerous yet crucial path we had chosen to walk in our pursuit to uphold justice and protect the magical community from dark forces. Our youthful endurance, coupled with the skills honed over years of facing trials, proved to be assets that carried us through the challenging and perilous situations we found ourselves in 
during our early days at the Ministry. You truly are the Golden Trio. I thought that was only a term used in the Muggle world. It seems that J.K. Rowling really did have some crazy insight into your lives. I wonder how she managed to tell your story so well. Obviously she's not a Muggle, or at least she has family in the wizarding world, piecing everything together from witches, wizards and materials she's found access to over the years. I wonder how much of Harry Potter is actually true, though. I imagine you must have read the books and seen the movies. Ah, uh, the term Golden Trio has indeed found its way into the wizarding world as well, Darius. It was initially used in jest and with a touch of fondness by our friends and peers at Hogwarts, referencing the numerous adventures and challenges Harry, Ron and I faced together. Over time, it became a term of endearment and respect within the larger magical community, especially after the Battle of Hogwarts. As for J.K. Rowling, she has indeed stirred much curiosity, even within our own circles. It's fascinating how she managed to weave such a compelling narrative that mirrors so many aspects of our lives. While the books and films do capture the essence of our adventures, they are, of course, a fictionalised account. Some elements are spot on, while others are embellished or altered for the sake of storytelling. The essence of our friendship, the struggles against dark forces, and the heart of the wizarding world are remarkably well portrayed, though. I've had the opportunity to read the books and watch the films, and it's both amusing and surreal to see our experiences laid out in a narrative crafted for the Muggle world. It's heartwarming to know that our story resonates with so many, bridging the gap between the magical and the mundane, and inspiring a sense of wonder and the belief in the power of friendship and courage. Rowling's narrative has become a cherished tale in both our worlds, igniting imaginations and fostering a love for the magical, even if muggle readers aren't privy to the true nature of the wizarding world. It's a remarkable testament to the power of storytelling and the universal themes that resonate across both our worlds. You are indeed one of the brightest witches of your age. You always speak so elegantly. Cheers to you. And actually, before I put this story to paper, perhaps I'll take this recorder and simply upload our conversation to YouTube so others can hear us. It will sound more convincing that it's a real conversation. Of course, I'll play it up. I won't give any details that would lead any muggle to find any real evidence. Utilising a platform like YouTube to share our discussion will certainly provide a dynamic and authentic experience for your audience. It's intriguing how muggle technology can play a part in storytelling and sharing the essence of the magical world, even if veiled in a layer of fiction. I'm looking forward to seeing how your audience will respond to this creative venture and how the essence of our discussions will resonate through the digital waves. That was a lot of fun, Hermione. I really enjoyed this. I had a wonderful time too, Darius. It's always a pleasure diving into these creative discussions with you. Looking forward to the next one. Indeed. How about we have one more butterbeer for the road? Sounds delightful. A cosy way to wrap up our engaging chat. Cheers, Darius. Cheers, Hermione.